Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an equation that has the cube root and the square root in it. So at this point you can just go ahead and pause and try the problem yourself first. Okay, now we do have the cube root of 4 minus x squared plus the square root of x squared minus 3 is equal to 1. And we're trying to solve for x here. So one attempt could be isolating one of the radicals. So we can try isolating the cube root. So if you go ahead and isolate the cube root here, that's going to give us one minus the square root of something, right? And then we can cube both sides, obviously. And when we do, we're going to get rid of the cube root. And when we cube a minus b, there's, you know, a couple of ways to do this. You can just use the binomial theorem in the original form, or you can just make it more compact by using a minus b cubed is equal to a cubed minus b cubed minus 3ab times a minus b. So if you do that, you're going to be getting terms like 1 minus this expression cubed, okay, a cubed minus b cubed minus 3 times ab, which is this, times a minus b, which is 1 minus the square root of x squared minus 3, okay? So when you multiply these two, you're going to get rid of the radical. You're going to get a radical here. You're going to get the cube of a square root, which again, you need to square both sides to get rid of. So this is going to take some time to uh, figure out, right? And you're going to be getting very large powers of x in this process. So we're not going to use this approach. Okay, we're not going to use the usual way of solving uh, radical equations. So what are we going to do? We're going to use a very powerful method a very powerful method in math, which is called substitution. That's what we're going to do. But how can we use substitution here? A lot of times when we have equations, we call something u or a or something else, and then we just re replace uh, x uh, or u with whatever it is, right? But in this case, we're going to be doing it a little differently. Okay, here is the way to do this. Okay, so I'm going to be calling the first expression A and the second one B. Now, what is so good, at, good about this? Well, let's go ahead and write it down. If I call this first thing A, the cube root of 4 minus x squared, and I call the second piece B, which is the square root of x squared minus 3, what am I getting from here? Well, I get that A plus B is equal to 1. Now, you did... You did basically switch from one variable to two variables, right? So now you have more unknowns. So how are you going to solve for it, right? That makes it harder. But if you consider the fact that we can actually get another equation in A and B, and that comes from where? Okay, so A is the cube root of something. So if I go out and cube both sides, then I'm going to be getting A cubed is equal to 4 minus x squared right okay awesome then b is the square root of something so if i go ahead and square both sides here then i'm going to be getting b squared is equal to x squared minus 3. cool now we got rid of all the radicals right and we have this equation and we have these two equations so how do we put it how do we put it all together well here's one thing that would be good to notice Notice that we have a negative x squared here and a positive x squared here, which means if we add those two expressions, what happens? If you go ahead and add a cubed plus b squared, then we're going to be getting 4 minus x squared plus x squared minus 3. And the x squared cancels out and we end up with 1. So we actually get a really nice equation from here that tells us that a cubed plus b squared is equal to 1. Well, we knew that a plus b is equal to 1, right? This is just an additional equation that we can use to our advantage. Okay, cool. Now, how do we proceed from here? Again, a powerful method we're going to be using, and that's called substitution. So let's go ahead and use that. How do you use substitution? Well, I can just go ahead and isolate b from here. So if I isolate b then I'm going to be getting 1 minus a, and I'm going to go ahead and substitute that in my second equation. So I'm going to replace 
be with 1 minus a. Okay? Cool? Now, what we were able to do after all these substitutions, we were able to get a nice equation that has no radicals in it, and it's actually not very high powers. It's only cubic, and let's see what happens. This is going to get even better. Take a look at it. Okay, now, so I'm going to go ahead and expand the radical, I mean the square. I've been saying radical a lot, so 1 minus 2a plus a squared equal 1. Okay, awesome. Well, to make things better, not worse, we're going to cancel out the 1, and awesome, we got rid of all the constants, so everything is a variable, which is pretty cool because we end up with a 0 on the right-hand side. So let's write our equation in standard form. a cubed plus a squared minus 2a is equal to 0. Beautiful. Even though this is a cubic equation, it's factorable. Okay, isn't that awesome? So we're going to take out the a here. I mean, if you do, then inside the parentheses, we're going to be getting a squared plus a minus 2, which is equal to 0. Again, something nice happens that this quadratic is also factorable. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and factor it. And our goal here is to find two numbers whose product is negative 2 and whose sum is the coefficient of a, which is 1. So those numbers are 2 and negative 1, as you know. So I, I'm just going to go ahead and factor this expression as a times a plus 2 times a minus 1 equals 0. Awesome. Now, we were able to get a really nice equation in the factored form, which is super easy to solve, right? So we're going to go ahead and proceed and solve for a. Now, from here, we get three solutions. So first, a equal, equals 0. Second, a equals negative 2. And third, we get a equals 1. But our goal was not to solve for a, right? a is just a dummy variable. So let's go back and see what is called a, right? Well, the cubic expression was called a, right? This is what we called a. So we're going to go ahead and back substitute a is equal to cube root of 4 minus x squared. Let's go ahead and substitute that. A is equal to cube root of 4 minus x squared, right? Okay, so now, do we need to do anything for b? No, not really, because a is actually going to give us what we need, so we don't really need to worry about b. Okay, awesome. So now, uh, since a is 0, that means that the cube root of 4 minus x squared is equal to 0. Now, if the cube root of a number is 0, then that number has to be 0, correct? 4 minus x squared is equal to 0. This means that x squared is equal to 4. And as you know, this equation has two solutions. There are two numbers whose square equals 4, and those numbers are x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. Okay? So we kind of branch off here. That's the first part. The second part is solving for a equals negative 2. But we're going to proceed the same way. Let's set this cube root equal to negative 2 because that's what a is. And then to, to be able to solve this equation, we can cube both sides. Let's go ahead and do that. If we cube both sides, then we're going to be getting 4 minus x squared is equal to negative 2 cubed. And negative 2 cubed is equal to negative 8, right? From here, what are we getting? Okay, if you put the x squared on the right-hand side, negative 8 by adding on the left-hand side, you're going to get x squared is equal to 12. And from here, just like the other one, you're going to get two solutions. One is going to be the square root of 12, which can be written as 2 root 3. The other one is going to be the opposite of square root of 12, which is negative 2 root 3. So, so far, we've we got four solutions, but we still need to check because these are radical equations. Okay? All right. The last piece is a equals 1. So, I'm going to go ahead and substitute that. So, I'm going to set cube root of 4x minus, 4, 4 minus x squared. I'll set it equal to 1. And if I cube both sides here, I'll be getting 4 minus x squared is equal to 1 because 1 cubed is also 1. From here, I'm going to be getting x squared is equal to 3. And again, like before, I'm going to be getting square root of 3 and negative square root of 3. Awesome. Okay. Now, let's go back to our original equation. What was the original one? We have the cube root of 4 minus x squared, right? 
we have the cube root of 4 minus x squared, and then plus x squared minus 3, and the whole thing is equal to 1, right? Okay, awesome. Now, what are we going to do at this point? Well, we're just going to substitute everything and check to make sure it works, right? So let's go ahead and plug in x equals 2. Now, what, one thing you need to check is basically we need to be in the domain, and the only problem can occur with the square root. So cube root will be fine. If you plug in 2 here quickly, you're going to get 4. That's going to be a 0. So this is going to be 1, and x is going to be, uh, from here, 2 and negative 2 are going to work again. So 2 and negative 2 are fine, okay? Let's go ahead and check 2 root 3 and negative 2 root 3. If you square this number, you're going to get a 12. 4 minus 12 is negative 8. That's going to give me a negative 2 here. And then the 2 root 3, if I substitute here, 12 minus 3 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. If I add them, I'll get 1. So this solution is also good, which means the other one is also good because when you square them, there's no difference. Let's check square root of 3 here. Square root of 3 squared is going to be 3. And 4 minus 3 is 1. And then if I plug in root 3 here, it's going to give me 0. And again, that's going to work, which means all solutions are valid. Actually, you may say that, okay, we didn't have to do the check, but it's always a good idea to check. The reason being that we didn't actually isolate any of the radicals and square both sides. We just did it a little differently, but it's always a good idea to check. So this equation has six solutions. And as you may guess, it's going to be a sixth power or sixth degree equation. And that's it. These are all the solutions. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Take care until the next video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Have a good one. Bye-bye.